Hello everyone, I've been really busy with personal life so I haven't been able to record a video for a while but I'm really hoping to get back more into YouTube. So I thought a great first video could be a tutorial about the thing I love doing the most in Scrap Mechanic which is blueprint editing. As you can tell by the title this is only episode 1 and I'm going to be uploading a bunch in the future, at least I'm hoping, since I want to teach every single part about blueprint editing to everyone. And this video is just about the pure basics and how to start getting into blueprint editing. But that's everything I had to say for now. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you later. <clears throat> also join the Discord server. You're going to need some sort of text editor. And I'm currently using Visual Studio Code since it's my favorite. But something like Notepad++ should work too. Though I'd really recommend downloading Visual Studio Code since it's free. And it's really good for any type of coding. So let's hop in game and take a look. So we also actually need to find the place where the blueprints are saved. So you can start by going to your app data folder. There are several ways you can do this, so I just suggest looking it up online. Or read the description of this video right down below since I'm going to include some of the ways to do it down there. Now that we're inside our users app data, we want to go into roaming, find Axelot games, click on scrap mechanic, user, user and your ID and then blueprints. And here we have a list of all our blueprints, which is what we're gonna be using. When we save new blueprints, they're gonna end up in this folder so we can edit the files. So let's head back in game and actually make something. So let's just start up a creative world. Since there aren't blueprints in survival yet, we have to start up a creative one, but that shouldn't be an issue. So when you're blueprint editing, you can only change blocks that are in a creation. And there are different types of things you can place down. There are the normal draggable blocks, like these ones. There are the objects that you can't drag, like all of these. There are joints, like bearings and suspension. All of these are gonna look a little bit different in the blueprint files, but I'll just go over all of them really quick. If we place down a few blocks on our lift, and save this just like it is. I like saving them as unnamed, uh, just as my test name while I'm editing the files, and then I can save them as something proper later. So now that I've saved it, let's just hop back into Visual Studio Code again. And then if we sort this by data modified, we should find the most recent one at the top. We can just open this and find blueprint.json. We can now drag this in here. And as you see, this is the entire text for our blueprint. So the way this is structured is inside of this area, we have all the data for the block. We have these quote marks which means what type of thing it is. So bounce is how much the object is scaled. Color is which color. Pause is which position it has. Shape ID is which type of block it is. And then these are the direction the blocks are facing. If we place down draggable blocks, then the only ones we should really wor worry about are bounce and position. So scrap mechanic is quite weird since X and Y are the two sideways directions. And then Z is upwards. So if we hire Z, then the object should go upwards. We can start by changing the bounds. We see X1, Y4. And what these two mean, as we remember, if X and Y are sideways, this has one thickness sideways, which is indicated by this one, and four thickness to the other side, which is indicated by four. It should also be three blocks high, which looks pretty accurate. We are able to change these so I can make it 10 high instead, and then just save the file. And now when I reopen my left, you can see that it turned 10 high. We can now try placing an object on this, like a lamp for example. If we place this down, and then we save this onto our left again. Now the file is gonna have changed. We still have the normal block right here, because it has a comma and then another bracket. If we now scroll to the side, we can see that this second bracket looks a bit different. And this might look a little bit overwhelming at first, but just remember that this is the position of the objects and we don't really need to worry about anything else. If we look at the blueprint, this object is really high up, but we can change this Z value to something lower, like three. Now if we save and open it up again, the lamp will be further down. We also have a lot of other things right here, but I'll have to go over them in the next episode. So this is cool and all, but how can we use it? Or in which way is this useful? Let's start by making something really simple. For example, if you have a thruster, um, it's normally even 
and there aren't any uneven thrusters, but let's try to make our own uneven thruster. So I'll just place down two thrusters next to each other, so that I can move one of them one block to the side. And if you have a lot of blocks on this creation, it gets really hard to know which object to move. So to make sure that we can find the correct thruster really easily, we can paint this thruster white. And this is what I would usually do, either white or black. So let me paint this thruster white, and that should normally be good enough, but I'll just paint this one black as well, for good measure. So now let's save this onto our lift. And now we can open up our text editor again. So the first thing we can put notice to is how we see color, and it says 222222. And the 222222 color stands for black in this game. So if you're looking for an object which is black, look for 222222. Uh, but we know this is not the correct thruster because we wanted to move the white one, right? So we can either scroll forwards and look for color white. This is probably the stone since it's not white and it's not black. Scroll forwards even more. And here we have E E E E E E. And all E's stand for white in this game. So we know that this object is white. Another way we can find white objects really quickly is by going into edit and then find. And here we can just type EE, EE, EE -E -E on our keyboard. And it's automatically going to scroll us to any part of the text which has EE, EE, EE -E in it. So now that we know this is the correct thruster to move, we know we want to move either X or Y coordinates, since we want to move the, one of the thrusters sideways. I'm not sure which is the correct one to move right now, but I'll just try to change 15 to 14 to see what happens. We now see that the thruster moved in the wrong direction. So let's just go back, undo that, and then we want to change negative one to zero. Let's save it, go back in game. And yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. The one thing to keep in mind though, when you do things like this, is if you have two objects inside of each other, they do not count as connected. So if I were to break both of these stone, it's gonna explode. So we want something connected to both of these thrusters. The easiest way to do it is just find the block, this block right here, where both objects are connected to it. So this means that this is going to be one single object, since this thruster is connected to the block, and this thruster is also connected to the block. I could also do something weird, like make some sort of arch, like this. Even though there's not a single block connected to both of them, this entire thing is one structure, so it's still all connected into one. If you want to experiment with this yourself, but you're not really sure what to make, Brent Butch made a really cool video where he just tried to glitch weld a bunch of different objects together to see which combinations would look really cool. So I think that video is definitely worth checking out. There should be a link in the description if you're interested, even though it's really old. I want to keep this video short, so I'll stop it here. I really do hope you learned something though, and that you can experiment yourself and see what you can figure out. But that's it for now, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!